obviously a big part of like depression or like any kind of mood disorder is losing hope like you're just completely hopeless i've used my experience to empathize with others when working in mental health in the younger generations there's been more awareness which is great but on the flip side of that people have been telling us generation snowflake and people with negative sort of stigma around it i think there's so much more to be done with young people because it is like i do think it's kind of like an epidemic it's like a crisis and i think maybe it's to do with like the world we live in now i don't think we've like quite caught up to how to like deal with all these new things that we have like technology and like the whole like internet space you know this, this environment is it's, it's non-stop on the senses and i think it's really crucial that we have ways to handle this because when we're witnessing violence trauma stress uh things that have been going on around us how do we process that the first time i really like had an issue with mental health was when I was about 17. Obviously I had no idea about that like world because I guess no one really like talked about it. They told me that I bi should be bipolar disorder and uh, they, I figured it out by myself because I read the psychiatrist analysis without like him not uh, telling me and um, and then I, because he didn't want me to tell and he didn't want to say that to me he was like oh if I'm gonna tell you uh, you are going to um, look on it about it, and you could it could be worse for you. I'm like, why? Like, it's better to like know what's like. There's nothing wrong with it. How do we stay positive? How do we stay, you know, engaged and hopeful for the future? With regards to mental health services for young people, um, there is a real strain and a pressure on it increasingly for a number of reasons. Um, young people have not been able to access the support that they need. I don't think that there are enough services um, available, especially for people that don't have the money to pay. We're supposed to have the NHS, which is supposed to help everyone, like no matter where you, what your background is or whatever. And, um, and I think the NHS is just like really kind of lacking. Um, and I think there's just like so much to be done there. What I do know is happening is self-medications happening, whether that's through whatever type of drugs, <laughs> you know, people might say, whether they're smoking it, injecting it, taking it with their mouth, whatever they're doing, it's it's a way of people numbing or coping, and that is so dangerous as well. Um, and I think that's something that there isn't enough of a conversation around. Something that is so like intimate that you need to find a way to express it, and this was gonna show the beauty of yourself and what you experienced, and this is gonna give you like a different light that other people don't have, and. I think you should just be proud of that. The more you nurture what people are good at, even when they have mental health, the more you can actually support their mental health because when you see, when someone realises they're good at something and they're getting that positive affirmation, everything else sort of falls into place. What I've been doing, I've started to train um, in the therapeutic use of the arts because it's something that I have found through my teaching of art that young people would just open up. So like the stuff behind me is two pieces from a recent group exhibition that I was a part of. You look really closely, you know, there's, there's words in there, there's messages, there's helplines, there's, there's thoughts that I've had or what people have disclosed to me. And I think it can improve your, your life because again, it's so great to actually talk about, about these things. So it's, it's a way forward. For me, it's just talking through um my body expression and movements instead of like just saying it uh, with words uh, he helps me a lot it's just like that's why like I I'm, I'm not a um, professional dancer but what makes me feel like I'm a dancer is just my my, my voice my interior voice to just say it let move <laughs> just dance with it and it's a very good therapy for me and so therapy doesn't need to be medication it's just for me it's like art and dance and music. You know, amazing thing with the therapeutic use of the arts is that it can go much deeper when you haven't got the words to express yourself and you don't have the process. You know, how am I going to communicate that? It's such a big opener. When I wrote poetry, I I, I don't think. I just allow myself to spill and I allow myself to be creative and free and open 
creative expression is such an important method of feeling and getting your head out of the sand, I guess. I'm sitting on a train and I'm talking about my feelings because I'm frustrated and I don't know how to communicate. I don't feel like I could talk with anybody else on the train, so I talk to myself. It's my way of coping, it's my way of dealing. And everybody has their own ways of getting through mental illness and mental health issues. It's okay to have these feelings because I can just put them on paper. Everyone on this capsule has a different story to tell. Whether they are happy, whether they are sad, that is often harder to tell. But I wish I could tell. And I wish I could tell my own story. But everyone on this capsule has a home to go to. Whether it's literal, whether it's metaphorical, that is often harder to tell. But they still have homes, and I shouldn't talk to strangers. So everyone on this capsule switches on their mobiles, whether they are in conversation, whether they are reading news, that is easy to tell. The news is dire, it brings a scrunch. Texts bring expression, and I have a hunch that everyone on this capsule feels the energy of bad luck and slow evenings. That everyone on this capsule could connect, but no one on this capsule can. So I read my book. Creative expression not only brings a layer of hope, but it brings a layer of excitement and passion and it takes away the fear of having a mental illness. The place you are, however lonely, dark, impossible, terrifying, numb, and you know, however that place may feel, hope is knowing that. It won't stay that way. Hope, hope is everything to me. Um, yeah, without, like, I wouldn't be alive without hope for like, hope, like, and I mean that. Um, you get it from people and people will inspire you and people will do little things for you and they will show you care in ways that they don't even realise and that's what gives you hope. Um, and it's, it's little things like seeing how trees grow and the sun shines and, and all of those little things and all those small joys that you get every day. If you don't have hope, it's almost too easy to say that nothing has any meaning. Without hope, there's like a void and it's a dangerous void. So whatever can give that hope is life-giving. Hope is everything, hope is essential.